name's Annette. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a traveler. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. And I really, really, really have spent the last 10 years probably enjoying helping other people be better at what they do, be better as a person, have more time and freedom to do the things they love to do, and enjoy their life more, spending time with their friends and family, and being healthy and those sorts of things. So. I, uh, I just wanted to talk about that for a few minutes. So I had a humble beginning, you know, and just like everybody else, I'm no different than anybody else. As a matter of fact, everybody thought that I was never going to be anything. I was just going to be some high school dropout. I was pregnant at 15. I told my mom I was pregnant on my 16th birthday. I didn't get my driver's license until I was uh, a mom because I, uh, I was grounded. <laughs> so um, I just you know, I just wanted everybody to understand that even though you might have a rough beginning to your story, doesn't mean the ending has to be rough. You can still be dynamic and you can still write your own story and you can still get all of those things in life that you want. You just might have to work a little harder because it's not going to be handed to you. So I want to talk about the five things, the five things that I would tell somebody if I was giving someone advice on what to do with their life at this point. Um, so, like I said, life wasn't always easy. I dropped out of high school at 16. I was married. I got divorced at 18. Um, I got married again at like 23 and divorced at 26. And at that point I was like, okay, apparently this isn't for me. <laughs> so I stayed single for over 20 years. I was raised my daughter. And um, fortunately, she got to spend a lot of time with her dad. As a matter of fact, when she was 13, she moved in with her dad and it completely shattered and broke my heart because she left me all alone. And I had never been alone ever in my life because I always had her. I went from home to being a mom and I raised her basically by myself for the most part. I mean, her dad um, kind of did his own thing and came and went and he, he did eventually learn to be a really good dad and she when she left me at 13 to go live with him I thought my life was over and you know she, hers was just beginning right so she goes and lives with her dad and she got to spend three really good years with her dad you know bonding and getting to know him well and honestly even though that was really really hard for me I went back to school I learned how to do some new things but her father passed away two years ago, and if she hadn't got to spend that time with him, then she probably would have never gotten to know her dad very well. So even though it was a tough time for me, I'm glad that she got to do that. Because, you know, in hindsight, if you had known now, you know, what you might have known then, or if you had known then what you know now, whatever, I said that backwards. Um, but anyway, I just, I just wanted everybody to know that you don't, have to go by what everybody else says you know if you're if you're thinking that your life is um, something not what everybody else thinks it should be none of that really matters because only only the only thing that matters is what you think so you know when my daughter was 13 I was working three jobs I was doing everything I could to make sure that her life was better than the life that I had growing up and guess what the only thing she really wanted was my time my focus, my energy. She wanted me to spend time with her, not always be chasing the mighty dollar or trying to figure out what it was that I was trying to do. And since I was such a young mom, I didn't understand any of that. So I had to learn the hard way how to be, um, actually how to even be in a relationship with a person other than myself. Because when you're 16, you're basically you know, self-involved. The only thing you know is yourself. You don't know anything about how to be, how to do, how to be accepted or not care whether or not you're accepted you know so I worked and worked and worked and what I really did was allow my daughter to feel unwanted so she ended up moving in with her dad um, so that was super hard but like I said earlier it was very beneficial for her and I'm glad super glad that she got to do that because time is something you can never get back Spending time with your friends and family, spending time with the people you love is not something that can ever be bought. You can't buy that. You can't go back and get it. So time, your personal precious time is all you have. And if you spend all of that time working or all of that time doing something else or all of that time 
um, tormenting yourself over the past and the things that you can't forgive yourself for doing, then you're wasting precious time. So part of my problem growing up was that I spent all my time worrying about people judging me because I was such a young mom. I worried about people thinking that I was a bad mom. I worried about people thinking that I was never going to be able to raise my daughter to be, you know, a decent person. And I worried and worried and worried about all of that. And I put a lot of pressure on my daughter because I wanted her to be better than I was. I wanted her to, to get all the way through school, not drop out of school. I wanted her to go to college. I wanted her to have all the opportunities that I could have had, but I, I decided not to take <laughs> through nobody's fault but my own. They were just decisions that I made that changed the course of my life. And I'm not saying that I made the wrong decision. I'm just saying that I made those decisions myself. And I made a lot of decisions throughout my life that changed the path of my life. But did they do it in a good way or a bad way? I don't know because I really, really like who I am now. And if I hadn't gone through the struggles and the tribulations and the hard times that I went through, then I wouldn't be who I am right now. So. I can't say that I would go back and change anything because who would I be if I did that? I don't really know. So if, if somebody handed me a time machine and said, here, go back to when you were 15 and start over, I couldn't or wouldn't even consider that because who knows? I may have made worse decisions or done things that were bad for me, like drugs or, uh, you know, I could have had a, a million things different than what I have now. So. I'll never say I wish I could go back and start over because I don't wish that. I am so happy and proud and excited about the life that I've built and my daughter has turned out to be an amazing mother because of some of the things that she watched me go through. She learned to communicate better with her children. She's learned to do a lot of things differently than I did. So. What I wanted to talk about was um, my, my five tips that I would give someone if they asked me, you know, what should I do at 15 or 16 or 20 or 25 or 30? I'm 49 now and I, I don't know everything. I am far from being the smartest person on the planet, but I do know what I've lived through and what I would tell somebody if they were to ask me those questions. So my number one tip is forgive yourself. Forgive yourself first for anything that you've done in the past that you feel like you're punishing yourself for. So whether that be um, something you may have said or done, forgive yourself for that. Or even for allowing someone to treat you badly. You can forgive yourself for that too. You don't have to punish yourself. You've been through enough. Let it go. Forgive yourself. And then forgive all those people that were involved for whatever reason. So forgive yourself first and then forgive everyone else. And once you do that, you will, um, you'll learn that forgiveness is much easier than you think it is. And this video looks like it's getting dark on me. I don't know why, but I'm gonna try. Oh, I can't do that on this phone. Sorry, it's just gonna be dark. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, tip number two is let it go. Let it go, let it go. Just stop, stop dwelling on the past. Stop worrying about things you can't fix. If it's something that's not gonna matter five years from now, you shouldn't even be worried about it. If it's something that's not gonna matter six months from now, you shouldn't even be worried about it. Just let it go. Just stop, stop already. Give up on anger, give up on hate, don't hold grudges, just let it go. Tip number three, dream big. Dream as big as you possibly can and speak your dreams out loud. I would not be sitting right here with palm trees behind me right now if I hadn't spoken out loud that I wanted to be here. And at the time, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just said, someday I wanna work from the beaches of the world. I wanna live in Florida. I wanna run my business from home. Well, guess what? It happened. And I, I didn't even really do anything to make it happen. It just kinda happened. So, you know, you have to, Speak it, dream big and speak those dreams. Build yourself a vision board, do whatever it is that you have to do, but focus on those dreams and know that they can happen. They can. You might have to work towards them, you might have to do some things to get there, but they can happen. Number four, trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. 
If something doesn't look right, it probably isn't right. Trust yourself. Trust that inner voice that you have that says, I don't think about, I don't think this is a good idea. Trust yourself. You have that innate thing inside of you that will tell you when something isn't right. You have to trust yourself. Number five, it's not all about you. It's not. I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you what, all of those things that have happened because somebody else did something or somebody else said something or somebody else wasn't where they were supposed to be when you thought they were supposed to be there. You know, those people you're supposed to be forgiving. Guess what? It's not about you. When somebody else does something dumb, it doesn't have anything to do with you. When somebody does something mean to you, guess what? It wasn't about you, it was about them. It was about what they were going through, what they were thinking, all of the things that they have going on in their life that affected their decision making, that affected what they said or what they did to you or around you, but it didn't have anything to do with you. What had to do with you was the fact that you were there, you were in their presence, you were part of the puzzle, and that has everything to do with you. So you gotta forgive people, you gotta let it go, you gotta dream big and don't stop. Thanks, John, that was really nice. <laughs> I might write a book someday, <laughs> but uh, probably not now. I'll, I need to get a little smarter first because I'm still learning. Um, trust your gut and it's not all about you. And when you start to do those five things, you will start to understand more about life. And like I said, I don't know everything. This is just my first five tips. I'll probably have more tips later on in life, but right now these are my five tips. And I think that if you start doing these five things every single day, starting first with forgiving yourself for all of the things that you have not let go of in all of your life, then you will have a better day tomorrow. So I say, these five things start tomorrow. Don't stop.